Hi everyone, my name is Jakub and I'm a developer relations engineer at Capturing Reality. This is the first part of the tutorial series covering drone mapping in Reality Capture. In this one, we'll go over importing the images, aligning them, and optimizing the alignment with the ground control points. We'll take a look at how to deal with the so-called bowel effect, how to deal with inaccurate geolocation of the drone images, and what to do when ground control points and images have different vertical systems. So without any further ado, let's jump in. Here I am in a reality capture. I created a brand new project and I also reset all of the settings back to the defaults. So the first thing we'll do is go up here and change the layout to one plus one. We'll also change some of the application settings and alignment settings for this drone mapping project. First, let's go to the application settings. I'll modify the coordinate systems. I'll change the project and output coordinate systems to the desired one. I am from the Slovak Republic and here, one of the coordinate systems we use is this one with the EPSG code 5514. Let's confirm the coordinate system and we'll get the option to set it also for output coordinate system, which I recommend doing. The next thing we're going to change is here in the import settings. We'll change the group calibration by EXIF to yes. I will explain why I'm changing this setting, but first let's go to the alignment settings. We'll go to the alignment tab, settings, and here under advanced, we'll change the distortion setting to brown 4 with tangential 2. The reason why I change these settings is to prevent the bowel effect. If you use drones for mapping, you are probably aware of this effect, but if not, I will explain. The bowel effect means when a real world surface that should be straight is curved to a bowel shape after the alignment. It is caused by the accumulation of distortions. To prevent or mitigate this effect, we have a couple of options. We can group the images taken from the same camera to share the same calibration and lens distortion parameters. Also using one of the higher distortion models like the brown 4 with tangential can mitigate this effect. Also to mitigate this effect, it is better to use a double grid flight with the camera set to an oblique angle instead of a single grid flight with the camera facing perpendicular to the surface. Or we can combine the two. In this project, I will eliminate the bowel effect with the use of ground control points. We can also prevent this effect by using accurate geolocation in the images by using an RTK or PPK drone. Alright, so now we can import the images. Let's go to the workflow tab and let's click on add folder. I already have my folder selected, so let's click on OK. All of the 299 images were imported. The thumbnails are visible in the 2DS. We can also inspect them in this large 2D view by clicking on them but I have already eliminated all blurry images, so they should be fine. I prefer to switch this 2DS view to 1DS, which displays my project structure and contents. Now I will click on Align Images, and after a couple of minutes, I'll be back with the finished alignment. The alignment is finished, and now it's an excellent idea to save the project. Let's go up here and click on the Reality Capture icon, and click on Save As, and save the project somewhere on the drive. As you can see, I've already done this myself. Now let's continue by importing the ground control points. We'll go up here and click on ground control. This is the file with the ground control points, but before I click on open, let's check the file structure. It contains a header that identifies the values in the file. First is the name of the ground control point. Next are the X and Y coordinates, followed by the Z coordinate or the height. These negative values are okay. They are required for the selected coordinate system. We can minimize this, and after opening the file, we get this import ground control dialog, and we need to change a couple of settings. This is just a file name, and that's fine. We need to change the file format to match the file structure. We need to change it to X, Y, and altitude. The value separator is not a comma, it's space. Ignore the first line need to be set to yes because of the header. The coordinate system is set correctly. We can expand the position accuracy and we can adjust the default values. We'll change the accuracy for the X and Y to be 2 cm. These are in the horizontal plane and 4 cm for the Z, in other words the height. If you are wondering about the ground control accuracy, the accuracy was from the GNSS receiver that was used to measure them. Units are set to meters and that's correct. After import, the ground control points are visible in the 3D view. And you've probably noticed the ground control points are flying above the terrain. And the reason is that the images and ground control points have different vertical systems. 
Images have ellipsoidal heights, and the ground control points have above sea level heights, specifically the Baltic Sea vertical system. When the ground control points are below the images, like in this case, Reality Capture can give us automatic image suggestions. If the ground control points were above the images, we would have to get the image suggestions manually. I'll show you both ways. Let's start with the automatic image suggestions. We'll go to the 1DS, expand control points, and I'll use Shift to select all ground control points from number 2 to number 6. I will go to the 1D Tools tab, and here we have the option to suggest measurements. Right after clicking it, we can see the suggested images in the 1DS, and we can also see them in the 3D view. The suggested images are connected to the ground control points with these lines. Now let's simulate that ground control point number 1 is above the images and didn't get any suggestions. First, let's deselect all ground control points by pressing Ctrl D. Now, we'll select ground control point number 1. We can select it in the 1DS or the 3D view by clicking on it. We'll change the layout to 1 plus 1 plus 1. We can do it up here or we can use the shortcut Alt 2. Now, besides the 3D view, we have a new 2D view. From the Alignment tab, we'll activate the Control Point tool. The shortcut is F3. If we hover the mouse cursor over the sparse point cloud, we can see image suggestions in the 2D view. With the ground control point number 1 still selected, let's rotate the view to face the terrain. I just double-click to change the pivot and turn the view with the right mouse button. We need to find the marker used for this ground control point. It's nicely visible right here, so we'll zoom in with the mouse scroll wheel. Now with the left mouse button, we'll place the ground control point. We don't have to set it with 100% accuracy because we'll adjust the position of the point in the image suggestions. And as we can see after I clicked, point number 1 has a few image suggestions visible in the 1DS. And they are also visible in the 3D view when I rotate the view like this. To disable the add control point tool, click on it again, or we can use F3. We have the image suggestions. Now we need to confirm the position of the ground control points in the image suggestions. Let's start with ground control point number 1. I will left click the first image suggestion so it appears in the 2D view. Let's zoom to the ground control point. Let's left mouse click on it and hold the left mouse button. Now we can adjust the position. When it's where it should be, releasing the left mouse button will confirm the image suggestion. With this 2D view selected, Pressing the down arrow on the keyboard will switch to the next image suggestion. To frame the selected ground control point, we'll press F. Let's again click and hold the ground control point and move it to the correct spot. But we won't release the left mouse button this time. Let's keep holding it and let's press the down arrow key instead. This action will confirm the image suggestion and switch to the next one. The up arrow key would switch to the previous image suggestion. On the last image suggestion, we'll just release the left mouse button. This way, we can confirm the image suggestions quickly. Now we could confirm the image suggestions for the rest of the ground control points, but I had already done this when I was preparing for this tutorial. I exported all of the control point measurements, so I have them stored in the text file. I use the Export Control Points option from the Alignment tab. Let's quickly take a look at it. After clicking on it, we can save it where we want and choose the type. I picked the default first option, which is comma separated, and it contains the file path to the image, point name, x and y coordinates. These are image coordinates in pixels. This time, instead of exporting them, we'll import the control points in the form of image measurements. I have the text file prepared, so let's quickly check it out. It contains exactly what I specified during export. Here is the file path to the image, the name of the control point, and x and y coordinates in pixels. Let's select the file and click Open. Here we have a couple of options. Here we can see the file name. We can choose the file format. Image, point X and Y is correct. The value separator is a comma, and we don't have to ignore the first line. The text file doesn't contain any header. We could change the measurements accuracy, but I will keep it at the default because I am confident that the measurements all fall under 4 pixels. Let's click on OK. Right away, we can see all the confirmed image suggestions in D1DS. Here are the residuals in pixels. The errors on the ground control points are pretty significant, around 13 meters. This is caused mainly by the different vertical systems. We'll fix it with the second alignment. 
Reality Capture also suggested new images, but we don't have to use them because we already have enough. We recommend confirming at least two to five images. To clear the unconfirmed suggestions, let's select the first ground control point, Control A to select all of them, and in the Scene 1D Tools tab, let's click on Clear Suggestions. Now we can change the layout back to 1 plus 1 by pressing Alt 3. We won't need the 2D view for a while. Next, I recommend disabling the inaccurate image geolocations. First, let's press Ctrl D to disable the selected ground control points. Ctrl A to select all images. And in the 1DS, we'll go to the selected input panel, search for the prior pose, and change the absolute pose from position and orientation to unknown. Now we have two options. From the alignment tab, we can use update. Update doesn't create a new component. It uses ground control points and distance constraints to place and scale the scene. It doesn't change the relative camera positions. That's why it can be used to position and scale already reconstructed models. In case that all ground control points are above the camera positions, I recommend manually adding suggestions for three ground control points, updating and using the automatic image suggestions for the rest of the ground control points. If I press it now, the ground control point errors are still fairly high. Pressing Align Images again will create a new component by optimizing the previous one. The camera relative positions will be optimized with the ground control points. The alignment is always more accurate, but since the camera poses change, all previously created models will not match with the cameras. Therefore, a new component is created, and models are left in the previous component. We don't have any models yet, and we want the best accuracy we can get, so let's press Align. The alignment is finished, and we have a new component, and the ground control points now have small errors, only in centimeters. This is going to conclude part 1. We created the project, aligned the images, and used ground control points to optimize and accurately georeference the project. Thank you all so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. When you are ready, join me in part 2, where we continue with reconstructing the model. Also, you will find all tutorials of this series listed in the description below. Feel free to drop your questions or thoughts in the comments and as always, see you in the next one.